my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we're going to do a name frame and we're gonna do it as a print and cut. So I'm gonna show you how we can create it using print and cut images, but we're actually going to back the print and cut images onto cards so that we can still create that 3D effect. So first thing I'm gonna do is measure my frame. These frames are from the range. You can get sort of these box frames pretty much from any good frame store. The range in the UK here does these ones because they're nice and long and they are quite deep as well. But any sort of long, deep frame will work really well for these. So first thing I'm gonna do is get a shape and I'm going to get a square. I'm going to unlock that square and I'm gonna make it the size of the inside of my frame so I know the size that I'm working with. So mine is a width of 22 inches by a height of 6.5. And I can lock that back up and I'm also gonna change the color just to a gray so I can see a bit better what's going on. Now I am actually going to cut this insert out as well. I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to do it on a plain card or whether I'm going to do like a patterned card. But I am going to have this as an insert so that my letters and then my images can be stuck onto it. Next thing I'm going to do is get my text and I'm just going to write my name. Sort of seven, eight letters is your maximum on this because otherwise things start to really look quite compact. Um, four, five is a good amount. Seven, eight is really your max. You can of course go higher than that, but just be aware you'll have less space for your images. You're looking for a font that's really nice and uniform and quite bold. So my favorite font for this is Impact. Now this used to be a design space font. It no longer is. You have to install it onto your device and then use it as a system font. You can get it from Defont, but of course you can only use that for personal use. But there will be other places that you can get impact. There are some great design space fonts that you can use for this as well. Just remember you want them to be nice and uniform and you do want them to be quite chunky. I'm just going to make this bigger. And I'm also just going to increase the space in between my letters. And I can also unlock that and just make it a little bit longer in height. Now I could also create an offset on these letters if I wanted to. So if I wanted to give them a real 3D effect, I could. On this instance, I'm not going to, but I might do on the next frame. What I am just gonna do is highlight both of these and duplicate it. And then with my duplicate, I'm actually gonna slice out my letters into my template. And the reason being is that, if I get rid of that, I can use this to place my letters perfectly where I want them to be. So we're just gonna hide that for a minute. Now the next thing is I'm going to get my images. So I've got some images from a third party site that I'm gonna to use today. This is for a special little boy's birthday and he is obsessed with cars. It is of course personal use that doesn't protect you but most companies are okay with it. So I've got my images here and the first thing I'm going to do is actually work out the sizes that I want them to be. So I'm just gonna come in and place them where they're going to be in my frame. Now the key to this is you don't wanna block your letters. So for example, I wouldn't wanna put one here because that C is gonna then look like an O. So you do wanna think about the placement of your images. Now I am doing these as a print and cut. So the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate my image. I'm gonna weld that all together so it just becomes one. I'm gonna turn it to white. And that is then gonna be my card cutout. With my actual image, all I'm gonna do is come down to the bottom of my layers panel 
and I can see that it's got a solid back which is what we want we want a nice solid base so that it's not going to try and cut out all of these individual pieces so whenever you flatten something for print and cut if you can you want to make sure that it's got a nice solid base so that it doesn't try and cut out in between each of your layer pieces so I'm going to flatten that and that's then going to become my print and cut element so exactly the same with this one here I'm going to duplicate it I'm going to weld those all together so they become a solid layer I'm going to change it to white and then this one here again if I look in my layers panel I can see it's got a solid back I can then flatten it and then I can keep on going and of course I'm sizing these before I make any amendments now with this one here you can see that when I've changed it I've actually got cuts in the middle of it which I don't want so all I'm going to do is come down to the bottom of my layers panel to my contour tool and I'm simply going to hide all contours I'm then going to duplicate this this one I'll make white and this one I'll make white bring this one down to here this one I'm just going to arrange it and centre front so it can sit on top of this one bring it over to this one I'm going to draw around both of them a line and centre and then I'm going to flatten it to that solid background and then that's it nice and easy this one so all I've done is I've created my background layer which I don't know yet what colour I'm going to do that in then I've got my letters I've got my print and cut images and my solid cardstock cut images and then I've created this as a template so that I can make sure that my letters are placed perfectly. I'm going to go to make it, I'm selecting on mat. you can see here I've got my print and cut images, I've got my solid card backgrounds, I've got my insert layer that I'm going to create. I don't know why that one's separate to the other ones but if you ever have this happen where you find you've got a mat in a different colour and actually you want it the same colour as everything else if you click on the three dots and you select move object you can then move it to another mat that mat's now empty but it will disappear when we go to the next stage I've then got my actual text pieces and then I've got my stencil template so that I can place them perfectly we can then go to continue first things first I'm going to send my images to my printer so I'm going to select center printer I'm going to turn my bleed off but I am going to use my system dialog so that when I select print it will bring up my system dialog and I can actually select my preferences so I can choose my paper type so I always do premium photo paper glossy and I always change my print quality from standard to high I can then select OK and that's going to print for me once that's printed I can then select all of my cut settings depending on the cardstock I'm going to use will depend upon the cut settings I'm going to select but if you're on an earlier machine like one of the explore machines if you set your dial to custom it will bring you to a menu like this and you can then select browse all materials and it will give you a lot more options in terms of your cut settings but of course those of us on Makers and the Explore 3 have already got this
I've got all my stickers here. Most of them I've already actually backed onto card. This one here I haven't, so all I'm going to do is just peel back that sticker. And then stick it onto my card backing just to give it a bit more rigidity and it means that I can put some of my foam pads on the back and create that 3D effect. I've got my backing piece of card all cut out and I've got my stencil and my letters but I realise sometimes you get so just kind of in the design element that you don't actually think. So what I should have done is rather than cutting out the letters and the stencil, I should have just cut out the stencil and then I could have used the letters that had been cut out of the stencil. So there was no need to actually cut the letters on their own. It happens, like we all do it. We get so engrossed in the project that we don't actually sometimes think about each of our steps so it was unnecessary of me to cut the letters out twice but I can use these for something else I can always find something else to use them for I'm going to use the name again so I'll find something to do but in future create your stencil and then just use the letters that are cut from your stencil as your actual letter pieces so I've got my frame here I'm just going to take it out of its packaging and this is the part that I'm going to be working with. And you can see that my frame has got that deep insert bit. So first things first, I'm going to put my background onto my frame. And I can, of course, glue this in place. I'm just going to use some glue tape. So next I'm going to get my stencil and I can either glue these on or I can use some 3D pads to give them that 3D effect and that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to add some pads, some foam pads onto the back of these. take that stencil away. I've then got all of my little cutouts so I can then work out where I'm going to put these. So I've got my sticker backed on to just some card. Again I've got my foam pads so I'm just going to add those to the back. I can then place that on. I can then pop this into my frame, put all the clips down, and there we go. There is our print and cut 3D name frame. I can't wait to see what everyone creates with these. They're so lovely. They make such beautiful gifts. As always, thank you so much for joining me. If you've got any comments or questions, please do leave them below. Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and give the video a thumbs up. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye.